a moment. Hallelujah. Lord, we acknowledge your goodness. We acknowledge your faithfulness to us, your children. Father, we acknowledge your favor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And no matter what is happening all around us, no matter what's going on, we choose to fix our eyes on you. Yeah. Our help comes from you. Our hope is in you. Our trust is in you. Our peace lies within you. Hallelujah. Thank you for being the God of being a promise-keeping God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you for being the one who cannot lie. We have great expectation, oh God, for what you will do. Because you've already come through. I know somebody's got a testimony in this place. Hallelujah. Has he come through for anybody in here? Yeah. He's shown himself strong on your behalf, hasn't he? Hasn't he fought a battle for you? I know I got somebody on this side. He's made a way for you, right? Hallelujah. Yeah. All it takes is just a good memory. Your record is good. Yes, Jesus. We're reminded of your goodness. Yes, Lord. Yeah. So it's all right if we take a moment just to tell you thank you. Hallelujah. It's all right if we take some time to tell you, God, how much you mean to us. Oh, you've been faithful. Yeah. Hallelujah. My God, you've been faithful. Yes, Lord. Oh, great is your faithfulness. Yeah. Come on, all I'm doing is trying to provoke you to praise your king. All I'm trying to do is provoke you to worship your Savior. Hallelujah. Why don't you slip up your hands tonight? We are Won't you saturate us with your presence? Yeah. Show up in ways that we can't imagine, God. Come on, keep those hands lifted. Show up in ways we can't imagine, Lord. Because you're a faithful God. And you keep on proving yourself over and over.
just say hallelujah hallelujah yeah oh my soul say hallelujah hallelujah oh my soul oh my soul hallelujah somebody give them a praise right oh my soul is saying You have brought us over, mighty God. Our soul sings hallelujah, Jesus. Father, you brought me over. You brought us over, Lord. Our souls will sing hallelujah. Oh, yes, we pass through waters. But the Lord has brought us over to a wealthy place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. I just want you wherever you are. Give God praise. He brought you over. He brought me over. He brought your loved ones over. David the psalmist says, We pass through waters. But God brought us to a wealthy place. Lift up your voice and sing your hallelujah to the Lord. Worship is what you do for God. No one can do that worship for you. No one can worship God for you. Oh, Rabaya can deliver hasi italido sabaya. Rakeke ida balado siba atekim da ligo do baya kata lido bosanda. You don't have to wait for any other time. The time to worship him is right now. Rebaka lido bosika bakate lida bosantaya. 
Genda ligo da basha ke teli do bo sante ya. Riga ba e kaligo tu siba ashibrayan teli go do bo siya. Worship is something you do intentionally for God. No one can worship God for you. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. You brought us over. We sing hallelujah to you, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We give you all the glory. We give you the highest praise. Receive our worship this moment. Receive our praise and receive our adoration. With your mighty hand, you brought us over. We are grateful to you, Lord. We are grateful to you, Jesus. We are grateful to you, Jesus. We are grateful to you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. With your outstretched arm, you brought us over. By your mercy, you brought us over. By your love, you brought us over. We give you praise, Lord. We give you honor. We give you adoration. Thank you, great God. In Jesus' precious name, we have worshipped him. Hallelujah. By his outstretched arm, he brought us over. We worship him today because when it comes to your worship to God, it is a personal thing. Just like you cannot delegate someone to eat on your behalf, no matter how busy you are, you have to create time to sit to eat. No matter how busy you are, you have to create time to ease yourself, whether it is a short call or it is a long call. That is not something you ask a loved one to do for you. That is how it is when it comes to our worship, <clears throat> excuse me, to God. You don't get too busy to the point that you delegate this aspect to anyone. That is actually what God created us for. That is something that God cannot do for himself. So whenever God finds anyone that dares to give him a quality worship, strange things are bound to happen in the lives of such individuals. I tell you, I sense an atmosphere of worship strongly. Since I woke up today, I, it has just been worship and worship and worship. This is an atmosphere that we have to periodically prepare in our lives. You don't wait until there is an issue before you worship God. We worship him because he created us for so. He said, these people have I formed for myself that they will show forth my praises, that they will worship me. We don't have to wait for a convenient moment to worship him. And I'm glad you and I have worshipped him even this afternoon. You're most welcome to today's midday prayer session. I'm glad that you've all joined and also those that will be joining later on. We are in for a wonderful time in God's presence this afternoon. Praise the Lord. God has been speaking to us greatly on this topic, unlocking your breakthrough. We've been taught diverse keys beginning from the, the, the first uh, Monday of this month of September. We looked at the key of thanksgiving and when Pastor Sophie came, we look at the key of prayer when Pastor, Pastor Marcy came. So there are diverse keys that we've been receiving in form of instruction that will power our breakthrough in our desired areas. And this day, we are most privileged of God once again to have God's servant, Pastor Alice Dangana. She's someone that I've known for so many decades. She is part and parcel of me on this journey. Some of you that have heard my story of a dearest sister that we prayed together and we work in the same institution while I was still a single lady. That is the sister I talked to you about. There are some of you that have heard me mention her name. Today we are blessed to have her on this platform, still looking at the topic, unlocking your breakthrough. 
I believe that God will use her greatly to be a blessing to us this afternoon. Without much ado, I would like us to receive God's servant, Pastor Alice Dangana from Covenant Word Ministries, Mina, Niger State, Nigeria. Let's put our hands together as we receive Pastor Alice Dangana. Amen. You're welcome, ma. Praise the Lord. We want to thank God for this hour. We want to thank God for this afternoon. I want to thank God for a privilege of coming to this platform. I want to thank God for the privilege of sharing with us this afternoon. And I want to thank the visionary of this ministry, Pastor Mrs. Wade Joseph, for giving me this privilege to share in this platform. Father in heaven, we want to thank you, Lord, for this time. We want to thank you, Lord, mighty God, for giving us a privilege to share with your people. Father, King of glory, I surrender this meeting to your own hand, O oh Lord. Holy Spirit, I surrender unto you because you are our teacher. You'll be teaching us this afternoon. None of me, but all of you, because I am the number one audience of myself, Lord. Mighty God, Jehovah, I surrender unto you, Lord. Jehovah, King of glory, I decrease that Jesus might increase in my life. The topic of this program this afternoon is unlocking your breakthrough. Unlocking your breakthrough. When they say unlock your breakthrough, it means the heavens over you is open. The heaven will open over us this afternoon in the mighty name of Jesus. When we talk about unlocking, it means that it's a lock that we need a key to open. The key, we're talking about the key of David this afternoon. The key of David is mentioned in the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 7. The key of David is to open that no one can shut, and when it's shut, no one can open. This afternoon, briefly, I want to share on four keys that I've jotted down here. Number one key is holiness and obedience. Holiness and obedience, if you look at the book of uh, 1 Corinthians, chapter 13, verse 7 to 12, when David was to bring back the Ark of Israel, God specified an instruction was that the Ark, which represented God's presence and power, should only be carried on the shoulder of consecrated Levite. If we look at the book of Exodus chapter 25 from verse 13 to 15, an instruction was given there. But Israel chose to copy the way of Philistine the way Philistines carry their own because it was beautiful and fashionable. Many times we copy and do things the way of the world. It will seem to be working for a while. When you copy and do the things the way the world do the things, not the way God gives instruction, it will only work for a while, but it will not last. Because the Bible said, the blessing of the Lord make it rich and it added no sorrow. But because they choose to copy the way of Philistine, what happened? The ark end up stumbling. And when the ark was to stumble, Uzzah, was trying to help the ark, he ended his life there. When you copy the way of the world, you will end up losing the things that are supposed to be of blessing to you. Hallelujah. How are you carrying the ark of God in your life to unlock your breakthrough? Praise the Lord. And uh, that one carry me to number two key. The number two key is the help of the Holy Spirit. The help of the Holy Spirit. You cannot unlock your breakthrough without the help of the Holy Spirit. As we all know that the Holy Spirit is such a the mind of God. Hallelujah. This afternoon, we need the help of the Holy Spirit to unlock our breakthrough. After David was anointed as king, the Philistine rose up against him and began to raid his land. David did not use his position, his power, his status, his weapon, his arsenal, he did not use it. Why? You could have used it because he has the army, he has people that can stand there, that can fight for him, that can fight the Philistine. But he didn't do it. The Bible makes us understand in the book of 1 Chronicles chapter 14 verse 10, the Bible says, And David inquired from the Lord. 
David inquired from the Lord. David waited to hear an instruction from God. And when God gave him an instruction, God gave him a specific instruction. Hallelujah. And God said, push you, you will overtake. Because he inquired from God and because he heard from God, he pursued and God gave him what? God gave him victory. He unlocked his breakthrough. Everything works out because he had God, because he obeyed God, because why? He was living according to the word of God. Hallelujah. David listened to God and he did what? He unlocked his breakthrough. Praise the Lord. I don't know what you are embarking on. A lot of us, a lot of believers embark on a project, on business, on journey, on ministry. They enter into marriages, relationship, copying the way of the Lord. And that one doesn't work out. When you copy the way of the Lord, you copy the way of the world, the way the world do their things, you will end up stumbling. Hallelujah. So let's listen to God. Let's look at what God is telling us concerning our life, concerning our business, concerning our marriages, concerning our relationship. When you, up, when you obey and you follow the precept, you follow the instruction of God, you will end up unlocking your breakthrough. Hallelujah. We can see a lot of sisters, a lot of marriages that are crumbling today. Why? Because they enter into it before asking God to come into it. You cannot you cannot start a project, then you want God to back you up. No. You first of all listen to God before entering into any project. You first of all listen to the help of the Holy Spirit. You first of all talk to the Holy Spirit before starting anything in life. Because when you talk to God, God gives you instruction. You cannot go unlock your breakthrough. Hallelujah. Then this one takes me to the key number three. Key number three is... What a life of worship. Hallelujah. Key number three, you want to unlock your breakthrough, you need a life of worship. Hallelujah. A life of worship. A life of worship here, I say, to whom you show worship has what? Has what? Is God worthy of your worship? You want to unlock your breakthrough, you need a life of worship. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 16, we saw worship is not just singing or dancing. When you sing and dance or you prostrate, that is not worship. When you want to worship and you want to host the presence of God, you need God. You need to be consecrated. Hallelujah. A life of worship is a life that is worthy of Him. When God wants your worship, when God wants your adoration, you worship Him. A life of worship, we do what? A life of worship, we open up the heavens for you. A life of worship, a life of consecrated worship, we do what? We unlock your breakthrough. Praise the Lord. Let's assume you just wake up and all you could hear in the morning, all you could hear is the things that are happening in the world. All you could turn to is your radio. Instead of you to sit down and worship God for your doubt, for you to unlock your breakthrough, oh no. But you listen to things that instead will make you to be afraid. What does worship mean? When you say worship, it means God, you want my worship. You want everything in my life. Hallelujah. A life of worship can what can unlock can unlock your breakthrough. I don't know what you're passing through. I don't know what is happening in your life. I don't know what is happening in your ministry. But you need to unlock your breakthrough through worship. You need to unlock your breakthrough through worship. Hallelujah. Worship is not just singing and dancing we do in the church. Oh no. Note that when the singers and instrumentalists were called to accompany the Levite, bearing the ark, they first what? They first sanctify themselves. In the book of the same Chronicles chapter 15 verse 12, they consecrated. A life of worship is a life of consecration. A life of worship is a life that is surrender. You surrender everything to God. Father, it doesn't matter what is happening. I know that you are there for me. It doesn't matter what is happening because I love you. Because you are there for me, I worship you. The Bible makes us understand in the book of Revelation that the elders brought down their crown to worship God. 
somebody will be asking me a question. I am passing through. I'm 40 years now. I'm yet to marry. I've been married for the past 10 years and there's no fruit of the womb. And you're saying I should worship God? Yes. Because when you are worshiping God, when you're living a life of consecration, a life of sacrifice, a life of worship, you attract the attention of God is a key to unlock our breakthrough. Because when you worship God in spite of what you are passing through, when you worship God in spite of what is happening around you, God turn and look at who is that person and look at who is that person worshiping me. Despite the fact that he's passing through what is passing through. And from there, God cannot but unlock your breakthrough. So true worship is living a life sanctified and sacrificed life that reflect and show God is all in all in your life. When you live a life of worship, when you live a life of sacrifice, you are eventually telling God, God, you are everything in my life. You are all in all in my life. So you want to unlock your breakthrough, live a life of worship. Live a life of worship. Hallelujah. You want to unlock your breakthrough, live a life of worship. A worshiper enjoy breakthrough. A worshiper enjoy the keys to unlock his breakthrough. Hallelujah. Then this one takes me to number four. You must break up your fallow ground. You must break up your fallow ground. So you don't sow among tongues. Hallelujah. Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 3. It says breaking up our fallow ground. Notice the instruction is first break up your fallow ground. You want to unlock your breakthrough. Break up your fallow ground. Many preachers break up people's fallow ground. And leave their own untreated Hallelujah. That's why I say as I'm talking, I'm talking to myself also. If the ground is fallow, it means no seed can germinate there. If our ground is fallow, it means no seed can germinate there. Until it is broken up, treated and renewed. When seed cannot germinate because of a hard ground, there cannot be fruits fullness and multiplication and increase. All evidence of breakthrough will be what? Will be useless. So for us to do that, for us to break up our fallow ground, breaking fallow ground, it means removing the, the what? Removing or breaking hindrances, limitation, and still in place on our effort Place on our marriages, place on our ministries, place on our relationship, etc., etc. Hallelujah. I say, Caleb, at 85 years, he asked for a fallow ground and break it. If you look at the book of Joshua, chapter 14, verse 12, Caleb did not allow limitation of physical age or mental capacity to limit him. Oh no. Somebody will be saying, Oh, I'm, I'm 40 years and 50 years old. At 85, Caleb could not allow what limitation, physical limitation, his age, he couldn't allow it what to break him up. Why? Because he trusted in God. You want to break up, you want to unlock your breakthrough, trust in the Lord. Break up your fallow ground, break up your limitation. Break up the things that are telling you that you cannot make it. Break up the things that are telling you that time has passed you. It is not true. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I believe God is speaking to us tonight. I believe God is talking to us tonight. I believe God is ministering to us tonight. Sometimes we don't choose our fallow ground. God brings it before us. Like the situation of the situation that is happening on ground now, the situation of COVID-19. This brought new ways of doing church. We have seen so when COVID-19 started, when we, when we can no longer go to church, when things can no longer happen the way it ought to happen, a lot of things, a lot of limitation to the extent up to now, some people don't even go to church, even when they say we should resume going back to church because they refuse to break their fallow ground. People live in fear. Hallelujah. 
This brought new ways of doing church, visitation, preaching, giving through COVID-19 was not a good thing, but it's, it did what? It showed many men of God, many children of God, the way they do their things, the possibility of doing things faster and bigger. Breaking up your fallow ground here means you must see opportunity in every challenge instead of seeing the devil. A lot of people, instead of taking advantage of what is happening, for you to break your fallow ground and move ahead, for you to unlock your breakthrough, no, they see the enemy, they see the limitation, they see the things that are happening. From this afternoon, I trust God that whatever is limiting you will stop in the name of Jesus. I trust God that whatever is not allowing you to move forward, God is bringing your way this afternoon the things that will break all the fallow ground in the mighty name of Jesus. Don't cause the fallow ground. Don't complain about the ground. Don't run away from the ground. But you break it. Hallelujah. You break by digging it by plowing, by cultivating it, and by sowing on it. So you don't sow among thorns. Thorns represent what? Hostility, opposition, frustration, and so things that chop life and destroy productivity. Don't allow anything to choke you. Don't allow frustration to stop you from unlocking your breakthrough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't allow it to limit you. Don't allow it to limit you. Don't allow it to chalk you up. Don't allow frustration to limit you. Don't allow it to limit your productivity. I know that God is unlocking our breakthrough. I know that God is about to do something in our life this afternoon. Hallelujah. Remember, when a land is left fallow, it is overgrown with wheat. So don't allow your ground to be followed. Hallelujah. Don't allow frustration. Don't allow anything to limit you from unlocking your breakthrough. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for your children. I bless you, Lord, for their life this afternoon. I thank you because they will obey, oh Lord, your instruction. I thank you because they will walk with the Holy Spirit. Father, I thank you because your children will worship you to unlock Jehovah, their breakthrough. I thank you, King of Glory, for every fallow ground that is laid there, that has sat as a barrier to them, Lord. Father, we are bringing it out of their way in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you, Father. We glorify your name, Jesus. Blessed be your name, great I am. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Hallelujah. So short but powerful. I'm sure you have added some keys to the ones you had initially before uh, joining to today's midday prayer. Like I said from the beginning of this series of teaching, that these keys are vital because the truth is there is no honor, there is no glory that uh, your being behind a locked door brings to God. There is no joy. You know, when someone gets to his house, instead of walking into the house, opening to his door to access his house, and is found by the door pacing up and down, everyone will ask question. Is there anything wrong? Why are you still by the door? That is how it is in our spiritual work. When we are not able to unlock our breakthrough, there are certain questions that life begins asking us. And what a joy God's servant, Pastor Alice, have ministered to us powerfully this afternoon. Like I said, it is so short and brief, but precise to the point. She mentioned number one point, key to unlock our breakthrough is to live a holy life, to be obedient to every instruction. What does this imply? That is, every instruction that God is passing across to us in this season, on this platform, demands our obedience. 
compliance to do as we have received. Praise the Lord. She said we should be careful not to do it the way of the, of the world. Doing it the way of the world looks so enticing, but at the end of it, it leads to destruction. That will not be your portion, and it will not be my portion in the name of Jesus Christ. Doing it the way of the Lord is not the style of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Doing it the way of the Lord, oh, you know, time is gone. So anyone that comes first, whether he's saved or he's not saved, you're ready to say yes. That is doing it the way of the Lord. Without creating time to ask the Lord, is this your will for me? The way of the, Lord, way, the, way of the world does not bother to create time to find out the will of God for their lives. They just accept anything that comes their way. And you know, the devil is a strategist in his own way. He can orchestrate because he has seen how anxious that sister or that brother is, and then he will stage an unbeliever. And because you have made up your mind that whoever comes, I will say yes, and then thereafter, calamity and destruction begins to hit the marriage. Don't do it the way of the Lord. It may look so enticing, but it ends up in destruction. And then number two, she talked about, uh, sorry, number three, to live a life of worship. To live a life of worship. That is so deep. She said a life of worship is, is uh, letting God know he is our all in all. And we cannot live a life of worship without consecration. She emphasized it is not yelling, it is not kneeling, it is not even, that is, it is not all about our posture. What matters first is a consecrated life. Praise the Lord. A life of worship powers us to unlock our breakthrough. Example of such is Hannah. The Bible says she went to Shiloh. There was an area of her life that she desired a major breakthrough. Just like somebody listening to me this afternoon, there's an area of your life that you desire a major breakthrough. Hannah, I'm sure, must have been to Shiloh many times. But that particular year, she went to Shiloh with a different understanding. The Bible says she worshipped God. And when she worshipped God, God remembered her. And that siege of barrenness was dealt with. She contacted the power and the key to unlock her breakthrough on the altar of worship. And what a joy we began with a powerful worship session today. And I believe if time allows us, we'll still worship God before we close. And then number four, she said we should break up our fallow ground. Break up our fallow ground. That is very deep. Deal with that physical limitation. She gave example of Caleb, even at the age of 85. He didn't allow anything to limit him. Don't allow anything to choke you. See opportunity instead of seeing limitation. See opportunity even instead of seeing the adversity. Don't allow anything to choke you. Break up your fallow ground by dealing with those things that are telling you you can't. Anytime you want to take a step, there is a voice that tells you you're not qualified. Break up that fallow ground. Stand before that mirror and look at yourself and speak to yourself that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Don't allow anything to intimidate you. Celebrate your height. Celebrate your completion. Celebrate all that you are. Make sure nothing limits you. Deal with every traces of inferiority complex. Tell yourself there is no another you. God took his time to package you as you are. Celebrate yourself. Because if there is anything dealing with some women in this generation is that, you know, they have lost, you know, they have lost, uh, they have lost morale, whereby they don't even look at themselves. They have lived a life of devaluing themselves constantly. When you live a life of constant devaluing of your person, I tell you the potentials in you will remain locked. 
just like our faces differs, I want to remind you that that is how the packaging of God for each and every one of us differs. There is something you carry that this generation is waiting for. There is something you carry that the world is waiting for. Don't allow your height to limit you. I humorously said something yesterday while I was ministering in the church. I celebrate my height. Don't say because you are a bit short and that is what is challenging you. There are places tall people are not needed. It is short people that are needed. Don't say because you are tall and that is your limitation. There are places short people are not needed. It is tall people that are needed. The reason why God gave you the complexion you have. God gave you the height you have. God gave you the nose. Celebrate your nose. Praise the Lord. Celebrate your nose. A great woman of God shared her story some times ago. She said while she was growing up, instead of people calling her by her name, they were addressing her by her nose. So, you know, she lived a life of feeling so inferior. When she want to pose for photograph, sometimes she would like, she will, you know, try to turn her face away because she was so conscious of that nose. She won't face people to express herself because when she want to look at people, the first thing that comes to mind, her nose. If you have big nose, celebrate that big nose. God allow you to have that big nose so that you can breathe in and out free of charge. Are we together? There is nothing wrong with your look. These are the little, little things, you know, that limits women, especially women, that limits women in life and doesn't allow them to unlock their breakthrough. Break your fallow ground by dealing with anything that wants to chop you. Therefore, I ask this question. What is that thing that I've been trying to chop you? Anytime you're about to walk into the next phase of your life, it shows up. It wants to chop you. It wants to tell you how you are not qualified. It wants to tell you how you are not beautiful. Celebrate your completion. There are places that light completion people are not needed. And that's why God gave you the completion you have. Are we together? Celebrate that completion. Praise the Lord. Today you will be, will be praying. What are we praying for? Chalk your choker. I had God's servant some times ago. Uh, Pastor Dayo Olutayo. He said you have to chalk your choker. And while Pastor Alice was ministering, she said you have to chalk anything. He said uh, don't allow anything to chalk you up. When she mentioned that, when she made that statement, come on, I said this afternoon, there was something else we had to pray for. But we need to choke your choker. If you don't choke what wants to choke you, your breakthrough will never be a reality. You need to choke your choker. You have what it takes to choke anything that have been trying to choke you. I want you to lift up your voice wherever you are. Begin to choke it. Choke it to death. Choke it to death. Lift your voice. I choke my choker. If you look at the life of Caleb, the reason why Caleb at 85 couldn't allow anything to limit him, he was physically fit, he was still open about because he knew there was an assignment that must be fulfilled. You know why it was possible? He choked his choker. There was another spirit that was found in him that didn't allow what was choking him to find a conducive atmosphere. There are some things that are ongoing in your life. It's because you allowed a conducive atmosphere. Chalk your choker this afternoon. Release fire. Chalk that affliction. Chalk sickness. Whatever it is, lift up your voice and begin to chalk that thing in the name of Jesus. Father, I have heard your word today. I therefore arise at this hour when the iron is hot to chalk anything that is choking me. To chalk anything that will not allow me to walk into my breakthrough to chalk anything that will not allow me to unlock my breakthrough to chalk anything that will not allow me to see opportunity do you know how many times opportunity have presented itself before you but there is something there is a strange spirit there is a strange force that have been choking your life that will not just allow you to see that opportunity i want you to release fire 
on anything that have been choking you, anything that have not allowed you to see opportunities that are meant to launch you into a new realm of life. Lift up your voice and choke your choker. Anything choking you, have a voice. Anything choking you can hear. He said, as soon as they heard of me, they fed out from their hidden places. Until they hear of you, they will not fade out. Until you address them, you know, violently, they will not fade out. I want you to lift your voice and address them violently in this afternoon midday prayer. Release fire and choke your choker. Anything choking your health, go ahead and choke it. Go ahead and choke it. Go ahead and choke it. That terminal disease can be choked. Go ahead and choke it. Anything that is choking your existence, choking your walk in of faith, you can choke it. Lift up your voice and choke it. Bariga baleko to zip ayandalia. Mandali godo bayante li grodo bashakada. Until you choke what is choking you, you cannot be free from physical limitation. Caleb was free from physical limitation because he choked what was choking him. I've, I have no idea what might have choked you. Whether it is finances, lack of finances, you can choke it. Whether it is lack of business breakthrough, you can choke it. Chalk your choker. Whether it is generational curses, chalk your choker. In the name of Jesus, Brada Kande Ligo Zibra Yakatayada, Branda Lego Dobo Shikaya, Branda Lego Dobo Sikaya, Branda Lego Dobo Shikaya, Mata Ligro Doba Yakata Liga Daba Shita Yagada, Beriga Da Keshinda Ligo Dobo Sita Yanda, Chok your Choka, Chok your Choka, in the name of Jesus. Brandoliga baskatala da ketala boshinta yada. Even in the realm of the spirit, something is happening. Lift up your voice and choke your choker. Choke that choker over the lives of your children. Makake telida basanta. I join my faith with you this afternoon. Wherever you are joining from, choke your choker. Choke your choker. La karabaye ketaya. Manda ligro do bashibra ata ligo do ba yeketala renda lida ba sata yekete balanda ligo mabraya zeti kaba jekentalia brado suta yekenda lido sibaya landaya until you choke your choker you will not arise and until you arise you will not conquer it is at the point of arising and conquering that you unlock your breakthrough until you choke your choker you will never live a relevant life lift your voice and choke your choker hannah became relevant because she choked her choker what what was choking her life was barrenness. She choked her choker in the place of worship, in the place of understanding of the faithfulness of God. She choked her choker. Nobody can do it for you better than yourself because you know the pain you go through. Nobody can do it better than you. Lift up your voice and choke your choker. Zambra da kata yeketa. Chok anything that doesn't allow you to be, you know, to be gainfully employed. Lift your voice and begin choking it now. Today you are in this institution. Tomorrow you are in another institution. You go about like a nomad. Enough is enough. Chok your choker. Chok your choker. Chok your choker. In the name of Jesus. Just like Caleb was physically fit, he enjoyed an unusual dimension of breakthrough. You are next in line. I am next in line. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. This season will not end without a notable testimony of your breakthrough. Breakthrough financially. Breakthrough in your career. Breakthrough maritally. Breakthrough in your health. Breakthrough in your family. Breakthrough in all that has to do with you. This season will not end without a notable testimony of breakthrough in our lives. Thank you, great and mighty God. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Have you choked your choker? Hey, Branda Yeketaya, choke your choker. I tell you the truth. Because anything choking you is a spirit. Anything choking you have ears, they can hear. And they have heard you. And scripture must be fulfilled. 
He said, as soon as they hear you, they will fade out from their hiding places. After today's midday prayer, you will look for them, you will not find them. You will check for that symptom, you will not see it. That feeling when you wake up early in the morning, as soon as you step down from the bed, it's like there are sharp objects, there are sharp pins under your foot. You have choked what has been choking you. That feeling when you wake up early in the morning, it will take you like 15 to 20 minutes before you, you, you understand your body. After today's midday prayer, that symptom, that experience will be gone forever in the name of Jesus Christ. In your next appointment with the doctor, I don't know who you are, your next appointment with the doctor, this is what you'll be asked. What did you do? What did you do? Because it will be entirely a different result. What did you do? That shall be the question. And I assure you that will be your last visit to the hospital. You can't chalk your choker and see be going about from hospital to hospital. That is not your portion. The resources that God will be channeling your way between now to the end of this year will be to take care of yourself. It will be to finance the kingdom. It will be to be a blessing to the less fortunate. It will no longer be to, to be walking in and out of hospital. That is not your portion. The covenant of God over your life forbids you for further experiences like such in the name of Jesus Christ. Lift up your voice and give him praise. Appreciate the Lord because you have already choked what has been choking you. It is a new beginning. Our fallow grounds will not be left unattended to. We have attended to it this hour. We have attended to it. We have treated it. She said we should not get too busy, you know, breaking fallow grounds of other people and leave our own untreated and leave our own unattended to. Father, we give you all the glory. We appreciate you because we have dealt with whatever it is that will have choked us from unlocking our breakthrough. Your name be glorified forever in Jesus' great name. Amen. The Lord bless you once again. God's servant, Pastor Alice Dangana, for ministering to us greatly on this platform this afternoon. I believe she'll be able to have ample time on uh, Wednesday to go deeper still on this topic. Hallelujah. She has laid the foundation today. We look forward to having her again on Wednesday. And we know the network will be so stable. Everything will be so clear. And you will hear her clear and loud. Thank you so much, Ma. I celebrate you. And in case you are listening to me and you are not born again, you are having a nudging in your spirit. Something is telling you that this is the time. This is the hour. I don't want you to defy it. I don't want you to defy it. I want you to do it right now because right now is the best time for you to accept Jesus into your life. I want you to repeat this prayer with me. Father, I am a sinner. I ran to you today. I know you died for me over 2,000 years ago. I recognize you today as the Lord of my life. I ask that you come into my life and be my Lord and my Savior. I renounce the work of sin. I renounce any covenant that I might have entered unconsciously with the devil. By this confession of faith, I am now a child of God. Thank you for saving me, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You are now born again. You are a child of God. I advise you, it is a beautiful journey that will demand your cooperation and sincerity. Therefore, locate a Bible-believing church in the location where you are so that you can be taught, so that you can be guided to know the privileges you have as a believer, as a newborn believer. And in case you are in Mombasa, you can locate us with the details on the platform. Call this number, send a text message, send a whatsapp message you'll be guided where we are and you'll be taught and mentored praise the lord once again i deeply appreciate each and every one of you that connected to be part of today's midday prayer i'm sure like me you are eagerly looking forward to wednesday session with god's servant pastor alice dangana hallelujah we have this opportunity again 
to unlock our financial blessings. I won't get tired of sharing with us on this because nobody wants to be, nobody can claim to say he or she is tired of being blessed by the Lord. There is no other way to unlock our financial blessings except through our offering. God gave an instruction to his servant in the book of Genesis, Exodus 26. He said, you will say to the people to bring an offering. When I read that verse of scripture, I wondered, I said, God was reminding them not to appear before him empty, to bring an offering. And he didn't stop there. He went further to give specification of the kind of offering they were to bring. He said they should bring gold, they should bring silver. He mentioned all of them. So he was not ashamed, neither was he afraid to ask of it. You know why? Because God knew he had blessed them. If God is asking for an offering from you and I, it's because God knows we have, we have all it takes. He has blessed us with it. And he blessed us with it so that when such opportunity comes to give to the kingdom, we don't keep back what we have. Hallelujah. Eternal Rock of Ages, we appreciate you because of this rare opportunity that you have given us again to worship you with our offerings. If you're asking us to bring, it's because you know you have blessed us with it. If you're asking us to bring, it's because you know that you're about to make us better than where we are, we were even before we gave. If we are, you're asking us to bring, oh God, it is because you know that you are not a taskmaster, but a rewarder of those that diligently seek and serve you, even through their resources. Therefore, I ask, oh God, let your blessings abound with each and every one that is honoring you this afternoon with their substance. And in return, oh God, let scripture be fulfilled in our lives. Thank you, great and mighty God, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. The Lord bless you. Let the spirit of worship that is already in this atmosphere and is part of us continue with us throughout the day today. No one can worship God for you. While you're cooking, while you're driving, the spirit of worship is so powerful. I still feel it where I am, and I know you still feel it where you are. Let's give him all the worship. Let's give him all the praise. And there will be no limit to the doors of breakthrough that God will be opening for you and I between now to the end of this month. See you on Wednesday, the same time and the same platform. Once again, thank you so much, Pastor Alice Dangana. We love you dearly, and we look forward to seeing you again, Ma, on Wednesday. Be blessed.